What is a local profile? If you work in IT, you probably heard somebody say, did you check the local profile? Maybe there's an issue with the local profile. So whether you do desktop support or pretty much any type of IT, you probably heard this and uh, probably had to deal with it at some point. But in case you don't know and you wanted to prepare for the IT jobs that you might be interested in, I will show you what the local local profiles are. If you go to your computer and go to the root of C, and I'll go a little bit slower on this one just in case you're new to this, go to your root of your C, right? The first thing we need to look for is a folder called users. So take your time, look for that folder, because in case you might have a lot of different folders within the root of C, kind of take your time. And if you just hit U on your keyboard, you will get to users, right? That will be quickly, that's a quick way of getting to any folder that you want. Anyways, once you find users, go ahead and double click it, right? When you open this up, you have a bunch of different folders. All these folders represent some kind of a profile. And in this case, all of these are local profiles, right? And I won't go into super detail on what each one of them houses and this and that, but I will go over the most common things that you would look at when dealing with local profiles. So in this case, we have Koboman, we have default, we have mama, we have public, and we take a test user, right? Test user, Mama, Koboman, these are all local profiles that I've created myself. So every time you install a Windows operating system, it will create a local profile for you. Remember, it will ask you, hey, do, what do you want your username to be? So if I, if I say Koboman, that's going to be the name of my local profile. And it's going to be inside of this users folder, right? So what is what are these other ones that show up? We have public and we got default. We know that Koboman was created, we know that Mama was created, and we know that test user was created. So these are all different logins that I can use, and I can use the passwords to log in, and it has all these local profiles. But we also got default, and then we got public. I will get back to these just as soon as I explain to you what's inside of these other local profiles. So let's go to test user here and see what's inside of this folder. And this may look familiar to you if you Look at the, the folder names. I know these are all icons, but they're all actually just folders, right? And I know this is some of those are repetitive things for IT professionals, but for beginners, you may not know that. They look like icons, but they're actually folders. So what do we recognize here? First thing that we rest with, we recognize desktop, right? So if we double click desktop, we can see what's inside of this folder. In this case, this user or this local profile does not have anything customized on their desktop. So so let's say test user had a text file. Let's just see if we can create one right, right, right quick text document. And if they had one created here, we would be able to see it. We would say, okay, well, okay, this user has a text, new text document created on their desktop. Same thing, if we go back to test users folder, um, uh, local profile, I should say, same thing. If you go to documents, we will have other documents. So let's just go ahead and create another text document. So if this user had a document inside of their documents folder, they, this would show up. So what is this? Where is this at? See how it says here, Koboman? If I double click this, we, I will see similar stuff and we all know where our documents are. So if I double click in here, that's where my documents are. Same thing goes for this test user, right? We go inside and we can see that he has these documents. So that's some basic stuff. And then we got some typical stuff that you may look at, you know, things like favorites, uh, you know, a bunch of different things that you would probably see in, at some point uh, when you were troubleshooting things. Another thing we may want to look at when it comes to local profile to troubleshoot shoot certain issues, we want to look at this app data folder. By default, this is set to be invisible. So if we go here and click view, and we can, this is typically unchecked. If we uncheck it, the app data folder is not there. But if you go in here and just select up here in your Explorer and do, you know, backslash and then type in app data, we can get to this folder just the same, right? We're inside of this app data folder now. So let's go back and now it's not visible. So in case you want things to be visible and I trust that uh, at, in most companies this will be checked so you can see hidden items. You can see that this folder is there. Same thing, so we go to app data. So what's inside of app data? Now, before we look at app data, let's go to a user, which in, in this case, let's go to Koboman's user and go to my app data. The reason we're going to my app data is because if we test, you go to test user, um, it's not going to have any data created for it. So, okay, let me explain what I mean. If I go to Koboman and I go to app data, inside of this folder will be these other folders. Let's say we just installed Mozilla Firefox. When we install my Mozilla Firefox, um, it will install certain settings and cache data within our local part of app data within our local profile. Okay, so so basically in the nutshell, every time I pull up Firefox, when I open it up, 
the data that it's opened within Firefox, that it's stored within Firefox, will be stored in local part of our app data folder. Now, if we look down here, so we're inside of local, if we look down here, we can look for our Mozilla, and you can see that there are these profiles, and what this has is basically your cache, your all your configuration stuff, and, you know, stuff like that. So now you know what app data folders are for, right? Same thing could be said for roaming. If we go inside the roaming, it will have Mozilla inside of it, and certain settings will be saved within it. In the nutshell, this is what app data does, right? It consists of all the app data that you use, that you run. So it stores it, whether it's temporary or not, whether it's configuration files or not, all of this stuff you would look for in here. So now that we're inside of the users folder again, once more, we are looking at our, we are looking at our local profiles. And what do we see? We see additional two that we're not familiar with. Well, these are created by the operating system itself. Again, you can see how this one is kind of faded out the default one. That means it's hidden just like so. It's hitting. It's hidden. In order to bring it back, we have to enable hidden folders. Now, do we, now we see it. So let's go from top down. What does default one? So let's say I just created this user, test user. I created, I gave him a new name and I gave him a password and this user goes in and logs in, right? When they go in, they will have all the same stuff as other local profiles. They will have desktop documents, all of this stuff, right? But it will all be empty by default. You know, this wouldn't, this wouldn't be in here at all. We're just going to delete it. This will not be here. None of this stuff. None of this stuff. Delete. But if we go back to users without making it too confusing, now we know there's nothing in it. You know, it's new user. There's nothing in it, right? If we go inside a default and create an item in here called new folder, right? As soon as the new user that has never logged into this computer, for example, this test user, as soon as they log in inside of their desktop, they will have that new folder that I was created in default. So by default, every new user that connects to this, that logs into this computer for the first time only, this is very important, for the first time only, will have on their desktop this new item called new folder. So as soon as test user logs in, he will see that folder. Keep in mind, for the first time only. Okay, that's what default does. It creates default folders, documents, etc., etc., for each new user that logs into this computer. Very important. Okay, now that we have that in the nutshell, let's look at the public one. Public one kind of works similarly, except you can make certain changes in real time, right? If we go inside of a public one, we see a bunch of different things. And again, these are, um, these are uh, hidden by default, just like the other ones. And there are only certain folders that are within here, right? We're going to miss things like contacts and such and such, right? But we got majority of the same folders. So what happens when we have the public desktop folder? When we go inside a public desktop folder, you can see that there are a bunch of icons within here. So what happens is, as soon as I install the Docity, Mozilla, OpenOffice, and Unity, these programs created these shortcuts inside of this public folder. So what that does, it creates these shortcuts and makes them available for each user that's that uses this computer. The only problem with this is, and it can be a little bit confusing, I know, it shows here that these are within public desktop. This public desktop is actually separate from your own personal desktop. So if I go to Kobuman's desktop folder, you're not going to see those because those are not the icons that I've created, right? However, they will show up, as you can see, here in the public desktop. So you can th think of desktop as multiple layers, right? So not to make this too confusing, let me demonstrate by example. Let's go to public desktop. Now I can create an icon that all of these users will be able to see, just like these programs did too. So let's go in here and create a folder. 
Do you see how it appeared right here? It popped right in. Let me just bring it back here. And now we have, let, let me just rename it so you can see that it also is making changes in real time, right? You see how it changed the test? This means that we can, over the network, for example, if it's if these are if these are all shared users, if you can access this host over the network through the back door, you can actually create icons for each one of these users so they can see them by putting them inside of public desktop. All of these users will see the same folder. It's actually very handy if you want somebody just to click on something and you tell them, okay, just click on this and it will create it there, right? And yes, technically you can go inside of Coboman, right? Go to desktop and create it there as well. But chances are it will not refresh in real time unless they, you know, unless they log in and log back off. It's, it's just not very reliable. However, when you use a public folder and shove anything you want inside of it, the user will see it immediately. It can be anything. It can be a folder, it can be a program, anything like that. Same thing, if you want to remove it, just right click it, delete, and it's gone, right? So that's the usefulness of the public folder, right? All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to beat the dead horse on this because there are many, many other things we can talk about when it comes to local profiles, this and that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with your desktop support buddies. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment, leave a dislike if you want. That's fine too. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out my other, other videos. Bye-bye.